Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another episode in the Hardest Grind series. No, not that kind of grinding. In the last episode, we went over the insane title in its original form, Pre-Cataclysm. A pretty extreme grind, but there are others that some would argue are just as tough, if not tougher. So, in no particular order, here's five more. First up, we have the Winter Saber Trainers, Pre-Cataclysm. This is an Alliance-only faction, which in its original state, if you grinded out reputation with them until you were exalted, you would get the Winter Spring Frost Saber mount. Since Cataclysm, you can just do a daily quest 20 times to obtain the mount, but before then it was much more grindy. You of course started at neutral and had just one repeatable quest called the Frost Saber Provisions. For this one, you had to gather 5 each of Shard Tooth meat obtained from killing bears in the area, and Chillwind meat obtained from Chimeras. And these meats had a pretty low drop chance, around 10-20% to I'd say. But completing this gave you 50 rep each, and the way the whole reputation worked was that you could unlock more reputable quests the higher reputation levels you obtained. So, at 1500 points into neutral, you unlocked another one called the Winterfall Intrusion, which required you to kill 5 each of Winterfall Shamans and Ursas in a Furbolg village to the south. Again, repeatable infinitely, and it gave you 50 reputation per turn in. The last unlock was at the honored level, called Rampaging Giants. This required you to kill 8 elite enemies at the other end of the map. It did give an extra 25 reputation, but the difficulty of the enemies and the travel time made it too slow. As a result, people usually just stuck with the first two, and the general strategy was to head to the Furbolg village, and on the way there and back, kill any bears and chimeras you saw to try to complete the meat quest, and just rinse and repeat that about 800 times until you were exalted. Now, this did vary depending on how crowded things were. If the village was constantly camped, it was probably worth trying to kill those elites all the way on the other end of the map. Easier said than done though if you're talking current content. So, that's a lot of grinding to say the least. Next, let's go over one that only takes one kill. It's our first non-reputation grind, and that's the Time Lost Proto Drake. That sounds pretty easy, just one kill? He spawns in the Storm Peak Zone in Northrend, and he even drops a mount at a 100% chance. So, what the heck is it doing on this list? Well, for a few reasons. One is, he doesn't spawn at any one location. There are a few different eligible spawn points. And he doesn't sit still, he patrols the area on a set flight path, and you have to keep an eye on about 50% of the zone. He also has a respawn timer that varies between 8-ish to 20-ish hours. It seems random. But he doesn't always spawn. He actually shares a spawn with another flying dragon called Viragosa, and no one cares about her really. It's also not a 50-50 chance. In fact, it seems like the Proto Drake is almost a rare spawn of Viragosa, meaning that normally Viragosa spawns at these points, and the Time Lost has a small chance of spawning instead. And to top it all off, even to this day, nearly 9 years later, it's still heavily camped, and if you go to the Storm Peaks, you're pretty much guaranteed to have multiple people waiting at each spawn point. So, in essence, we have a rare spawn that rarely spawns every 8 to 20-ish hours from another rare spawns at 4 different locations, who also patrols around 50% of the zone depending on where it spawned. And, it's also heavily camped 9 years after the release of its expansion. There's a reason why it's called the Time Lost Proto Drake. Alternatively though, you can just buy it off of the Black Market Auction House, if it pops up there that is, and if you have a mountain of gold. Next, we have some PvP reputations, and this is where people's experiences may have varied. Specifically, I wanted to talk about the Arathi Basin reputation, which is the League of Erethor for Alliance and Defilers for Horde, and the Warsong Gulch reputations, which were the Silverwing Sentinels for the Alliance and Warsong Outriders for Horde. Again, talking pre-Cataclysm here, these took a very, very long time to grind. I think they still take a decent amount of time to get to Exalted, but before the release of Crossrealm Battlegrounds way back when, it was ridiculous. In my case specifically, I was on the Cadgar server on the Alliance side, and we vastly outnumbered the Horde in population. As a result, it wasn't uncommon for queue times to be hours long even during prime time, and to top it all off, we sucked. To get reputation with these factions, you had to cap flags in the Warsong Gulch, 
or get a certain amount of resources in the Arathi Basin, and in the case of my server for the Alliance, it was nearly impossible. Two hour long queues, and a lot of the time, no reputation. The only thing that made it possible was that, back then, you could get these tokens for playing the battleground. If you won, you got three, and if you lost, you only got one. And, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe you could turn in three at a time for a bit of honor and a small amount of reputation. And in my case, that was the main way of grinding it out since we very rarely won either battleground. These marks were removed a while ago in the Wrath of the Lich King expansion, I believe. So, this was definitely a case-by-case -case basis. For my situation specifically, if you were Horde on my server, you definitely had an easier time. Fast queue times and easy wins most of the time. Or if you just waited until post 1.12, which is when they released the Cross Realm Battlegrounds. Even still though, it was pretty insane. It's hard to say which one is harder. Overall, the Arathi Basin rep comes slower I think, but you got reputation per X amount of resources, so you were at least guaranteed some rep unless you just got 5 capped right away. And there was always the possibility of 5 capping the other team. If you don't know, this makes the battleground go by at lightning speed, so it was very server dependent. For the Warsong Gulch on the other hand, it was flag captures, so you could come out empty handed. And to top it all off, initially there wasn't a time limit, so you could have games that would go on for hours. And each flag cap was 35 reputation. For neutral to exalted, that's 1200 flag captures, or 400 wins. So, even with fast queue times and easy wins, that's a headache right there. A lot of people ask why I have such a random looking transmog, and in the case of the tabard, it's sort of a memento of one of the hardest grinds I ever did in the game. It's the Silverwing Sentinel tabard, which required Exalted with the Silverwing Sentinels. Yeah, I probably played a little too much back then. In the case of Warsong Gulch, things have been made a bit easier over the years. You now get more reputation with flag caps, and the new Warsong Scramble Brawl I heard is a really fast way to max it out quickly. Anyways, who could forget the granddaddy of all PvP grinds, the Rank 14 grind. Before the Burning Crusade, the whole PvP system for World of Warcraft was a little different. To get the best gear, you had to ascend a ladder of sorts. This ladder had 14 rungs, but to climb it, it would take months, and while doing so, members of your own faction on your server are trying to knock you off of it. So, there were 14 ranks listed here, and the higher rank you achieved, the better rewards you got. With the Holy Grail as a purple armor set and even a weapon at ranks 12 through 14. Epics were much harder to come across back then, so this was actually a really big deal. And the weapons in particular were really good, even being superior to the Blackwing Lair gear. For the most part anyways. But to get them, you had to farm a virtual currency called Honor Points, something you're most likely familiar with by now. So, everyone wanted them, which was the main problem. And that's because you not only competed against the enemy faction by killing them for honor, but also members of your own faction as well because the only way to rank up was to get more honor than them. How much did you have to grind? Well, it's a dynamic thing and it depended on how much everyone else on your server was grinding. So basically, 24-7. For the high ranks anyways, it was pretty trivial to get 10-ish by PvPing frequently, but not over the top. That's because for each rank, the top X percentage of players who PvP'd for that week would rank up, and this percentage got smaller and smaller the higher the rank, all the way down to 0.1% for rank 14. I won't go into the actual calculations and equations themselves since they're pretty intricate and complicated. Just believe me when I say that you really did need to go just about 24-7, and it was pretty common for people to account share to reach it. So, you constantly wanted to be queued for battlegrounds, and while in queue, world pvp. And to make matters worse, there was something called dishonorable kills back then. You would get these by killing low level quest givers and vendors of the enemy faction, and they would have a negative impact on your current honor rank. They were very easy to kill by accident in the chaos of world pvp, and you had to be so careful or you'd lose a day of progress in one button. And, even if a party member killed one, you too got credit for it. So, if all of this wasn't ridiculous enough, if you can actually believe it, initially, to continue using these weapons and armor, you had to retain your rank. 
So, even if you completed this insane grind, you were still competing with your server, and if you didn't PvP, you would derank, and thus be unable to use your weapons and armor. Luckily though, they came to their senses on that one, and made it so you just needed to reach the rank to buy the gear, and from then on, if you deranked, you could still use it. Now, I know it's an arguable thing, but personally, I think the rank 14 grind was the biggest grind to ever have existed in the game. Say what you want about the insane title and all of these rep grinds, at the end of the day, you can make progress with them. With this PvP system, even if you grind your butt off all day, you could even lose progress if others just happened to play more than you. I PvP'd enough to get exalted with the Warsong Gulch on my lopsided server, and still, the highest I got was rank 10, so that should tell you how bad the grind was. But that's about it for this one. As always, I hope you found the video interesting or entertaining. Like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.